Hey y'all, I want to talk to you about dielectric grease because it's something that true meaning and purpose has managed to elude me my whole life. Um, it's something where I just, I don't know, every time I come across the question, I, I don't spend enough time thinking about it. I've heard too many different answers. And I decide, you know what, it really doesn't matter too much for what I'm doing, and I'm just gonna move on and not worry about it. But this time around, I'm doing a project on my Harley, and it has a 72 pin connector. So it's got a whole lot of wires very close together. And the purpose, the reason I've gotta be working on this is because I was having a problem where the apparent diagnosis is that the wires are, the wire terminals have fretted. Uh, they've, they've worn, they've either worn or they've gotten weathered, uh, oxidized, one of the two, or both, and it needs to be taken care of. It's not, it's, it's, it's a picky area with the throttle and I need to make sure I've got the absolute best connection. So uh, early in life, uh, maybe 11, 12 years old, uh, my father who is a mechanical and electrical engineer, but he never did it for a living. And his father was an electrical engineer, but he did do it for a living. Uh, my father, we were doing a tune-up, and he said, well, he says, you, you put the, the dielectric grease uh, onto the nipple of the spark plug, and you put the anti-seize compound onto the threads of the spark plug, and you put it in. And I always ask why. And, you know, he had said that it helps with the electrical connection and, and make sure that, that everything works as well as it should. Well, I didn't think to, to ask any more details on that. But in my brain, I took that to mean that it was electrical grease, that it was grease that helped conduct um, electricity. And so many years went by and I'm always putting it onto the nipples every time I do my plugs and, and friends' plugs. And, you know, several years down the road, I'm talking to a friend and he had been a mechanic for a while. And uh, another friend that was there happened to be uh, to sell uh, electrical. He was an electrical salesman, sold su electrical supplies. And I'm talking to the two of them and they're saying, oh, you know, dielectric grease. Yeah, it's, um, it insulates the connection. It keeps things from arcing. It, it, it keeps it where it belongs and you put it onto the female part. So instead of putting it onto the nipples of the plugs or the nipples of the distributor cap, you're actually putting it onto both ends of the spark plug and you can put too much, you can be liberal with it if you want, won't hurt anything. So I was like, oh, okay, well, I've been doing it wrong, but I hadn't been hurting anything. Um, you know, I'll go a few more years and I, I start being a little bit more liberal with it and I just decide, well, I'm gonna put it on the spark plug tip and I'm gonna put it on the uh, ends of the wires as well. or the So, I go years down the road and then somebody else tells me the opposite thing again, gets me back to where I was before. And like I said, none of these connectors were close to another connector, so it didn't really matter. But here I am now and I, I've got these very concentrated connectors, so I finally need to know an absolute right answer. So I called Niogel, which is the, the, the brand of good dielectric grease that I chose to use because Harley's having these problems and because Harley specifically says that Niogel is what should be used. I figured that I'd spend the money on the better stuff since I'm having such a problem. So, you know, and, you know I, I've, I've watched YouTube videos, I've gone through the internet and I get all sorts of answers. I, I get that it conducts electricity. I get that it insulates electricity. It prevents from arcing. I get that it's for waterproofing. I get for that it's for all of it. I get people saying that, oh, you know, you're supposed to put it all the way around the, the, the outside of the connector, but you don't put it inside of anything. 
Um, I, I, I saw a NioGel video that was talking about how well it conducts and it was doing an experiment with different connectors. And even in their quick the video, the quick part where they're applying it, they're applying it to the outside of the connector, which makes it seem as if it's all about weather. And I just wasn't sure enough, but I needed to absolutely know for sure. So I called NioGel on the phone, got to talk to an expert uh, guy on the phone in technical support, and I got him to explain the whole entire thing to me. And uh, you know, nobody should know better than him. So you know, I, I told him a little bit of what I had been told in my life, what I had been going with, et cetera, and he says, well, you have, certainly haven't been hurting anything, but you haven't been using it as good as you could be either. So he, he told me, he said, you put it into the female end. And I said, he, he says, you just put it all over the place and, and be liberal with it. And when you put the male in there, it's going to push anything away that is unnecessary. And I said, okay, well, you know, can I like pack it in there? I mean, can I just, can I really pack it into the connector? And he said, well, he said, if you want to pack it in there, that's fine. It's not going to hurt anything. We usually recommend like 30 to 70% uh, packing it in and not, rather than 100. But if you packed it in 100%, you certainly wouldn't be hurting anything. So I said, okay. So you know, now I feel confident. He says it can all touch each other. You can glob it on there. It can be a, a you know, just spread it out like like peanut butter, uh, and and you know, you don't have to be any more careful than that. And there's no such thing as too much. So, uh, I like I said, I mean, I, I asked him if he was sure and positive, and you know, I, I uh, verified everything. So I thought I would do a. Excuse me, the camera here, but I decided that I would do a quick, you know, video showing what I'm what I'm doing here, since so many people seem to not understand. But I'm just gonna glob it all in here recklessly. Honey badger don't care, all over the place. Too much is fine. So there we go. So it's all over the place. And oh, I want to show you something else uh, that he told me on the phone that I thought was really, really cool. This stuff, I'll have to see if it works for this too. I don't know, I didn't ask. But for the NioGel, uh, I know. It glows in the dark fluorescently. So, got a fluorescent light. Oh, I guess it's hard. No, the camera doesn't want to. Oh, can you see it? The camera doesn't really do it justice at all. So, you know, if you if you bought it secondhand, oh, sorry guys, it's not showing up on camera, but I guarantee you that it's that it's glowing. Oh man, that's disappointing. It doesn't show up. Might be the way cameras work, or maybe it'll show up afterwards, and I just can't see it now on the camera. But it glows in the dark. So you know that it's real and you can shine it on what you're working on to see if, oh yeah, look at that. That glows in the dark a little bit, but not as much. So if you want to be sure whether you're using the right thing, it glows in the dark. Uh, I hope the video is helpful. I, like I said, I, I never was sure about it. There's conflicting things on YouTube and conflicting things on the internet and in forums and technicians and uh, I was a parts manager for many years uh, at dealerships so you know I 
talk to a lot of technicians and I would get different answers from different technicians. Uh, so yeah, use it liberally, use it on the female end. You can pack it into the connectors. It'll push everything away. It's for um, helping to keep things from arcing. It's for helping to waterproof and it's for helping to keep things from oxidizing and, um, and fretting. So there you go. Hope the video wasn't too long and hopefully it was helpful. But uh, yeah, it's terrible how much misinformation there is on this stuff out there. <laughs>